Hey guys, it's Gary Roberts with Roberts Bushcraft. Um, a couple of years back, I did a video on my backpack. Still the same. Fox Tactical. Jumbo. It's a good uh, three-day pack. Uh, I think with the kit that I have, I could survive three days. But this is my main hiking bag. You know, I always take this to the river. It's either this or my sling bag. So I wanted to redo my kit um, because with any kit it changes over time that's definitely what happened to mine I have a couple of main differences and uh, I'd really like to show them off today so stay tuned all right guys so first off I want to mention two things that are always on me when I go out in the woods or that I normally use with this pack or they're attached on to it somehow my BK 16 It's got a nice patina on it. Let me bring that closer. It's got a nice patina on it. Uh, my Carter handles, hand, uh, handle scales. And uh, I really am a big fan of this knife. It's my main knife that I just always have on my person when I'm out in the woods. This is a AZ Welkie Kydex sheath and belt attachment point right here. I'll try to put links in the description box down below to where you can buy all this stuff. I'd eventually like to purchase a dangler from them because sometimes when wearing this pack and this is on my side, uh, this does poke in my side when I'm wearing my backpack sometimes. But then again, some other times the belt loop will slide right down the middle here and be all right. So I eventually do want to upgrade to a dangler, but that's sometime in the near future. And I do have a ferro rod with a compass on here. Secondly, I always have a good schmog. I've heard them pronounced schmog or schmogs. Uh, same thing. This is like a big old bandana. You can soak this thing in ice water and wrap it around your neck and stay cool during a good hot summer day like this. Or you can have this wrapped around your neck as a scarf. It'll keep you warm during the winter time. Um, also, you can uh, not totally filter out water, but filter things like uh, sticks and pine straw and stuff out of the water. And uh, guys, all around, this is just awesome. It's 100% cotton, so you can also make char cloths with this. And I just love this. This is my one of my number one survival items. This is, or, or in my top ten, I mean, I'm always wearing this. And I'm always using this for something. It's just really good. And you can also use it for cleaning stuff out like your cook kits. But of course you want to have a separate towel or something for that. So now, on to the pack. We'll start on the outsides and work our way in. Uh, this is a Fox Tactical Jumbo backpack. And I've used this for a couple of years as I've said. And it served me really well for what we're doing. But we are about at the limit of space in this. We do have just a little bit more left at the top here that we could put something in. But especially not during the summer, we wouldn't want to put like a sleeping bag or something in here because it's just way too hot outside for that. What I do have though is a poncho liner, which is a lot like a nice good blanket. So on the outside, we do have a climbing grade carabiner lock system this is nice it's uh of course we could use this for repellent i do have a strap in here to do a harness with and also when this is hooked onto my backpack i can take the small piece of paracord that i have here on the outside of my knife and attach it to this here carabiner because I did say sometimes this will the uh, handle will stab me in the side while I'm hiking with this so you could always do that and that is sometimes what I do do with that but guys get you a climbing grade carabiner these things are awesome you really don't know how much your stuff 
you use these for until you get them and then you realize why you've been missing out all the time on the side here I have my BK9 knife system I have it to where I can reach back with my left hand and grab that this is my favorite knife number one blade uh, and this, a lot of people complain about the scales with this these handles um, I haven't had a problem with them yet of course I would like to upgrade to my Carta just for looks but uh, I really am a humongous fan of this knife this thing chops it can cut carve it can do really anything you want it to and it can also strike a ferro rod uh, the butt of this knife you can uh, process bark with this by smashing it down you can uh, you can crack nuts open like acorns and uh, pecans uh, guys this thing is just awesome and also here I have a general kit and a fire kit this is a little pouch that my dad sewed up for me a couple of years ago I think it was up top we have a nice little razor blade wrapped in electrical tape and then we actually do have the Altoids 10 here this is a fire kit fire materials uh, little kit it's got punk wood uh, charred punk wood it's got uh, fat wood in it and char cloth so a good little tiny kit rare right also wrapped in electrical tape to seal it up and keep water from getting inside because and that's essential with any fire kit outside of your main bag that it's going to get wet you want it to be all the way sealed up this is just a general kit has uh, band-aids it's a, got a fishing kit in it it's got a lot of other good stuff I'm not gonna take that all the way out because it is well actually you know what I'm gonna go and show you it's a uh, same color as my fire kit I do want to re replace this uh, me and my dad were talking about this we saw a guy do it with his SE5 I think uh, put a silky pocket boy in his SE5 sheath and we're gonna try that out with these BK9s and that just sounds awesome the uh, silky pocket boy is a small fold-out saw that can fit in most cargo pockets and we thought that that would be awesome to complete our kit for our knives but as of right now I haven't got one yet uh, I'm saving up for one so putting that in there I'm gonna go ahead and put my knife back in again I want to be able to draw this with reaching my left arm back so that's why I put it like that into the sheath on the other side here let me get that centered this is my food kit down here at the bottom and this is my cooking kit so on the outside I have my titanium spork this thing is awesome it's got a little bit of a serrated ledge on the side of the knife uh, uh, side of the uh, fork side right there and of course you got your fork and then your spoon and this thing comes in real handy and can be washed off really easily this is my baking tray we found these at food line But we had to dent in the edges a little bit because it was just a little too long to fit inside of our Stanleys. We cleaned them out, uh, ground it down just a little bit at the top, and my dad made these for both of us. Of course, we do love the Stanley Adventure Cook set, which we have in the main pouch. But this is a really awesome item to have. We do all kinds of stuff in this. Bannock bread, muffins, um banana nut bread muffins 
I mean, we do all blueberry muffins. I mean, we do all kinds of stuff inside of these little baking trays. And this is just a little uh, sponge, a little cleaner sponge that we found at Dollar Tree, I think this was. And it's got like a kind of a, a harder side on this side for good scrubbing if you have like some leftover bread or something there that got cooked on or baked on. You're going to want to get that off. You're going to want to use this green rough side. And then, of course, when you got it all cleaned out, you use this yellow side just to get up the rest of it. And these things come in real handy, real easy to wash out. And even if you don't get all the gunk out, of course, when you get home, you can rinse it totally out. And it's all good and clean. And it's real nice to have. And that fits down right inside of this. So that all fits down like that. Inside here is another one of my favorite items. It's the Esbit cook stove. And as you can see, this has been used quite a couple of times. I'm gonna set this up real quick, right here in my hand, just for a quick little demonstration. So it pops open like that. Right there. My penny's right here on the side. This is why it's called a penny stove. You set your alcohol stove right here. And we found this uh, charcoal uh, grill grate, or actually the whole grill, on the side of the road. And we cut up the grate to fit uh, our mini stoves. We have uh, different mini stoves, so we work those out. And basically, I set my Stanley right on top of that. And once the heat or alcohol gets boiling, we drop your you drop your penny right in there. So then the flames come out sides and wrap around the container that you're trying to boil or cook in or what have you. And there you go. And that fits in this little pouch that I sewed up myself way back when. This was actually going to be to keep the Esbit fuel tabs in. But I decided, since I already had it laying around and I never used it, why not go and throw my Esbit in there? Because it fits perfectly. And that goes right on the bottom of this, of my baking tray. And that's everything on this front little pouch here. And this is a Condor, uh, let me remember here, Condor uh, H2O pouch, I think is what it's called. It's for a small water bladder that you fit inside here, but your Stanley Adventure Cook Set that you can buy for $20 at Walmart fits perfectly inside of here. And guys, I cannot recommend this little bag enough. Or this little pouch enough. I mean, this thing has held up through some pretty rough stuff. We use this every time that we go out in the woods. So then, on the inside, we have a, uh, we still have a good little bit of room. We still have this whole lid full and a little bit of space at the top. So I have it in a stuff case so I can grab it all right out. That's my whole cook set right there on the bottom. Let's start with that. This is just a little $4 cup that you can find at Walmart. Uh, this comes in good handy for mixing or uh, if you have to drink out of it, of course you can. Like uh, if you have your coffee boiling up in this, but you have ramen noodles that you're cooking up in this, you can do that and still eat it out of, out of this uh, cup right here. Again, like I said, mixing is awesome for this. Like if you have, when we are doing uh, baking for with the bannock bread or muffins or something, we always mix it up in this cup. And this fits right perfectly on the bottom of the Stanley. And another neat little feature is that the Stanley cook set uh, lid here fits perfectly on top of this $4 cup. All right, and of course it's been uh, scorched and bronzed by the fire. How many times we've had this 
in the fire. Uh, I mean, it's just countless number of times we've used this thing, and it's held up really well. Of course, a couple of complimentary scratches, right? <laughs> um, it comes with a plastic ring, uh, a, a plastic tab here, but of course, when we're baking in these, we turn them to the side to put them in the fire or in the coals with that baking tray slid right in the inside. And of course we have countless numbers of videos with us using this in it. You can basically find any hiking video of ours on our YouTube channel and this is in it. Uh, we love to bake when we go out there to the Roanoke River. Just a beautiful spot. And as you can tell, with that piece laying in the fire, that, that uh, plastic tab would melt off really quickly. So we replaced it with a little key ring here and that holds up just fine. It does get extremely hot if you do do that little modification. It gets extremely hot when you're cooking with it and it, I mean, it, it just, be careful with that. You might want to have a good little pair of pliers with you to get that out with. Now at the top, this is one of my latest additions. Hasn't been tested out yet, but I don't see why this wouldn't work. It's a little tape container. A little scotch tape container with tape in it that you can find at basically any store. We got this one at Walmart. And it fits perfectly down inside of the Stanley. Uh, found these at uh, Sheets. They are true lemon uh, sweeteners. Uh, they make whatever you're trying to flavor up tastes like lemon or they have lemon in it we haven't tried these yet but maybe we can make up some lemonade one day or something I just have uh, coffee singles right here four of them to be exact a couple of packets of sugar three packets of sugar right there and an English breakfast tea down at the bottom which is my absolute favorite you can find that at Ollie's or the dollar store they sell a big old thing of it and you would think dollar store tea would be really crappy, but that's some of the best stuff in the world right here, guys. All right, so that's my little beverage kit that I have right here. Let me scoot my pack out of the way here so I can sit down. And then inside of my Stanley, This is another, or this is actually my latest addition to the kit. Like I said, this is always changing, but this is probably going to stay how it is. Now I'm going to take this out to show y'all guys everything that's in here. I'm going to get up on my knees here so I can show y'all better. So what I have are is a little spice kit. This is salt and pepper. These are this was created out of little glitter containers that you can find at the dollar store. And all you have to do guys dump that glitter out because we're real men, we don't use glitter around here. Dump that glitter out and fill these things up with different spices. Salt, pepper garlic of course I labeled them at the top my beautiful hand right in there <laughs> garlic Cajun seasoning just in case we catch like a fish or something out the river that we want to cook up and also Old Bay now these look very similar so that's why very important to label your items and then the rest of the stuff in the bag here this is a meat seasoning, a uh, meat uh, meat rub, flavoring for your uh, different meats that you catch. If you were in a survival situation, you killed a raccoon. Um, of course, raccoons aren't the best tasting animals in the world, so you might would want to put something like this on it. Or if you uh, end up killing like a squirrel or something, you might want this uh, meat rub to put on it while you cook it up just to make that meat taste a little bit better and I got these from Domino's 
crushed red pepper and Parmesan cheese. I don't know how long these are going to stay good. The crushed red pepper should stay good forever, really. But the uh, Parmesan cheese I'm not so sure about. But I'm going to keep that in there. And that's my little spice kit. I didn't want to go overboard with it because I wanted something that can fit down inside of that green cup. And speaking of that green cup, this thing has been used millions, and I mean literally millions of times. I have used this thing so many times to drink out of. Every time we're going camping, we're doing coffee, or we have some kind of drink or something that we're using, and I always use this cup. So I like to keep this down inside of my Stanley. And the Stanley, when you buy it from wherever you're getting it, should come with two of those green cups inside. Uh, all we did was take out one of them so we can fit extra things down inside of the kit itself. Now what I did here was three on one side. Let me, there we go. Three on one side and then the other two scooted over just a little bit. So it could fold up. Uh, let me get that sealed up. I need to try to get that as airtight as possible. So bear with me. Alright, so there you go. Folded right in half, as I was saying. Right down there inside of that green cup. And it fits perfectly. And then the scotch tape container. My beverage kit fits down right on top. And I think we have room for one more. Now I haven't. I don't have one with me. They sell them at Walmart near uh, Motor Oil and our, uh, Walmart here in town. That might be the same for y'all's. I don't know if all Walmarts are laid out the same. I know definitely food lines aren't. That's a real pain in the butt going to different sides of town for food line because you have no idea where anything is. But anyways, guys, that is my cook kit. And I don't like to have a whole survival kit or something in my uh, in my little cook kit here the main reason is I use this thing so much and if it's a main use item I want to be able to get to it quickly and not have to go through a bunch of crap to get to it and putting a whole hundred piece survival kit in here is exactly the opposite of what I'm going for uh, of course, you might say I could put stuff bags, uh, stuff sacks in here, and that would eliminate some of the problem, but I don't want to have to pull out 800 bags either, guys. So, a small little beverage kit, spice kit, your drinking cup, that's all I want in here. And then, of course, with the cup, mixing cup at the bottom, and of course, the Stanley itself, that's all I want in my cook kit. Um, and of course, I normally do have my, uh, my, uh, alcohol stove sitting up uh, here at the top also called a penny stove I normally have that sitting on top of this in my stuff bag but like I said that did get dented up so I'm gonna have to make me a new one all right so I'm gonna set that aside and we're gonna keep on moving on Okay guys, so now we're down here at my food kit. This is a packed thing full of food. I have a pack of ramen noodles. This is my whole bannock bread making kit. I'm gonna go through the items really quickly. Bacon powder, salt, and brown sugar and flour big old thing of flour love me some good old flour and that's it guys I don't need any more than that that's my bannock bread making kit right there pack of oatmeal maple and brown sugar Ramen noodles, another pack. 
and a whole pack of muffins. I love me some good old blueberry muffins. Now, one of our main problems, and of course, anybody who's got a keen eye and ears, obviously, can hear and see one of the big things that I'm missing. In my food kit, the main thing that I'm missing is protein. Definitely am missing protein. Of course, with all the carbs in this, I could survive my three days, and I am trying to kind of turn this towards a three-day kit. Of course, this is always going to go with me when I go out to the woods, um, but I like having the comfort of knowing with the food that I got in there, I could survive three days, and with the rest of my stuff, I could survive three days. And I like knowing that, so I try to try to kind of make this a three-day kit in a way, too. And so definitely, I do need some more protein. Real quick to pack that back up. Just muffins, then oatmeal, manic bread. And then ramen noodles. And the reason I have my whole bannock kit, my bannock bread making kit in a plastic bag is obviously I don't want all those ingredients all over the place. Um, I also don't want, just in case, if a bag does bust, I don't want that getting everywhere. So, uh, like if my uh, bacon powder busted open, that would get all over my food kit. And all over my, yeah, my whole food kit. And that would just ruin it, really. Well, not totally ruin it, but it'd be a real pain in the butt. On the uh, outside, I have my Fox Tactical Patch. I would like to get some Robert's Bushcraft Patches, which we'll probably be selling, too, if we get enough of them. In here, I have a Fire Striker and my number one ferro rod. have those on the outside, not with my fire kit. So it's really easy to get to, right here on the outside. Now inside, I know and I am aware that it's summertime right now, and I probably don't need all this, but I don't like to change my kit up a whole lot for summer, because sometimes you do still get them cold nights. This is a neck gator. These uh, were military Gore-Tex gloves. These were a discontinued thing because the liners in the inside would come out every time you take these gloves off so I cut the liners out so I just have the shells eventually I'd like to get me a good little pair of just Gore-Tex glove inserts you can buy them at Walmart uh, little black packs of them and probably will be picking me up some of those but I have these wool liners in here and I love these things but I can't just use these as is I mean I could but they'd get really nasty. So I like having that, uh, those shells to cover those up with. And then on the outer pocket, I have my headlamp. I love this thing. And this is literally one of my most used items. I love my headlamp. You don't realize how much you need it until you lose it and you can't find it. Which, this thing has probably been lost a million times. <laughs> and uh, it's still going. That thing is awesome. I got that at Dunham's. Hand and body warmers. Uh, super hand and body warmers. I still have those in there. This is my fire materials bag. Uh, this is a condensed version. My first version had a lot of duplicates of stuff in this. And it was kind of useless. It was having a whole lot of extra weight. For nothing and I condense it down char cloth weatherproof matches and striker cedar bark processed cedar bark cattail fluff uh, even more condensed cedar bark 
uh, processed cedar bark. This is fat wood and foil nuggets. I have a video on my channel and we'll have that linked in the description also or I'll try to get that linked in the description uh, how to make these we have a video on that those things are awesome and fat wood we have an absolute ton we have a whole cabinet full uh, a couple of years back we sold some big chunks and they got bought up pretty quick lastly I have my flint and steel kit this is a striker given to me by Travis Covington at the Primitive Skills Gathering in Cortland, Virginia. Um, three years back now, I think it is, and this thing is still striking sparks real good. It's daytime, so it's kind of hard to see this, but this thing does shower uh, the ground or your tender in sparks. Up here, I have my Condor toboggan. And again, like I did say, a lot of this can probably be taken out because this is summertime. And I might end up going with that, but before we know it, it's going to be the end of summer and it's already going to be back in fall. So then I'll have to put all the stuff back in. So I don't know if I am going to do that or if I'm not. I have a large gauze bandage here. Basic first aid instructions. I like to keep some of these manuals with me just in case something does happen. I do have uh, a good little first aid knowledge of my own, but just in case, I don't know why I would forget it, but just in case if something did happen and for some reason I did forget how to do something, I have this little pamphlet here. To show me back how to do it this came with my ultralight hammock it showed you a couple of different knots and how to do the rope guide of course I already know these but again it weighs nothing just in case if I forget for some reason how to do it I got it here this is my first aid kit it doesn't consist of a whole lot um, band-aids some gauze bandages some tape that's it for both of these back pouches here. And I do have a, spare, uh, a real, real small first aid kit here in an Altoids tin. It's mostly got things like band-aids in it, small gauze bandages, stuff like that. Of course, I do need a, a tourniquet or two in here, uh, definitely just in case of something big happened and maybe even a small trauma kit just in case if something did go down I would have that we got these straws from Subway uh, I don't even know how long ago it was but I ended up snipping the ends off so I do have a small straw here to work with like that so I got that here this Altoids 10 first aid kit is interchangeable with my yeah. fire kit or my general Altoids 10 kit on my BK9 system. So I can take my fire kit off and throw my first aid kit if I'm just walking in the woods one day, or I can take my general kit off and throw my first aid kit on my BK9 again for the same thing. If I'm just hiking in the woods and I think I might need one of the kits more than the other, I can change them out. All right, so now on the inside here, I'm gonna Turn this to the side so y'all can get the full shot of everything. Up top, I have a thing of paracord. Had 100 feet, but then I went and survived up my Crocs. I don't know, y'all are all jealous about that right there. <laughs> Again, you never know what's going to happen from here to the shop. If you're never prepared, the worst can happen to you. So, got my paracord right there. 
these are just a couple of aluminum tent stakes. Definitely not the best in the world, but and just the dust just poured out of that. Yep, I do use these quite a good little bit though. Uh, you can see <laughs> one of them's uh, bent, but these main four are used to stake down my tarp. And like I said, I do use these almost every time we go out to the river or camping or anything. It's just good to have a couple of extra backups just in case if you do forget your tent stakes or something like that, you got them. And I do like to do a little uh, bow tie, uh, not bow tie, but um, shoelace tie on all my bags so I can easily pull and the whole knot comes undone. This is my Baco Laplander. This is also bent and that won't take a whole lot to straighten back up. Just a little bit of time in the vise grip and we'll get that back to uh, its uh, normal state. But this thing has been used countless number of times and it's still holding up well. You see the coating's just tearing off but this coating is real strong. This has stayed on there forever. It seems like, and on this side, barely any of the coating is coming off. But this thing is held together really well over time. I can't quite put a number on how many years ago I got this. I want to say four uh, years ago, one one year for Christmas, it was in my pile, but I can't quite remember. This is my Sawyer water filter bag and I cannot recommend these things enough. This little water filter can do a hundred thousand gallons. A hundred thousand gallons guys. And for its size there's nothing else that can beat it. I don't care what anybody says. This size you cannot beat this. One hundred thousand ga uh, gallons uh, twenty dollars from Walmart. Get this thing guys. Buy it and use it. It comes with a plunger kit to get all the nasty water out. A squeeze bag, you fill this up, you attach the water filter to it and you squeeze it out and it's nice clean water. And a straw down here that goes at the bottom of this so you can reach down into small cracks and stuff. And I keep that in a little stuff, uh, stuff sack that we made as well. And all this uh, fabric that we made our custom uh, little bags out of comes from Joann's, a fabric store. But you can buy this kind of fabric almost at any fabric supplier, I think. And I don't tie this one all the way up because I use this one quite frequently. I just do a little over and under type deal. This is a really old uh, military bag. I can't quite remember what this was used for, but it has these alligator clips, I think they're called, don't hold me to that, but these alligator clips on the back here, just to attach. And this can fit on the front of my pack, and I just keep this in here, it's empty. Uh, I just keep it in here just in case if I find something along the way that I really like, I can attach it to the front of my pack or the bottom or the side or whatever, throw whatever it is in there, close it back up and just have it there. But I just keep this in here just as a nice little, uh, like a dump bag, but not rolled up. It's just sitting in here just in case if I need it. I have a bag of socks. It's just one pair. I need a couple more. But lately, I really haven't grown out a lot of my clothes. I got real tall lately. And uh, so my mom said, you can't put a whole lot of stuff in here. I said, what about one pair of socks? She said, sure. So all I got is one pair in here right now. But I cannot recommend having a good little clothes kit 
in here enough. A um, couple of pairs of underwear, a couple of pairs of socks. That, that should do you fine. If you want to go with the whole outfit, pants, uh, socks, underwear, uh, shirts, all that, by all means, go ahead. But all I have in here right now is just a pair of socks. A black trash bag, heavy duty black trash bag. Uh, obviously, we use these for picking up trash. Another really neat thing that we do with these is with our uh, air mattresses, we have a method of using a trash bag to get a lot of air to uh, fill up our air mattresses really quickly with these. We might show that off in a video one day, possibly, I don't know. We'll just see what, see what we do. This is a little, really crappy fishing kit. It's just got a weight, a hook, and a couple of different baits in there. Not real impressed by that. <laughs> Definitely not. But um, eventually, uh, very soon, I am going to get a better fishing kit. Here's my hand line. I need to upgrade to a better wire or a better line because this line, once it gets uh, curled up, it remembers that pattern per se so it stays kind of curled up and you can't even see that but oh you might be able to but it kind of stays curled up so when you throw it off it comes off uh, when you throw the line it comes off this hand line piece very awkwardly and it doesn't come off real good so it's kind of hard to actually do some real good fishing with this in the state that it's in but Uh, like I said, upgrading the line, upgrading the fishing kit, a lot of, see, uh, it's nice as you go through a kit to kind of in your mind know what you need to upgrade and know what you need to work on and stuff. See, that's a goal for me, you know, uh, getting a better fishing kit and getting a better line for this. You know, that's something that I had to look forward to, to buy sometime, whenever. This is just a figure four deadfall kit that I made. Uh, when I, This is actually my first figure four deadfall. I was learning uh, a couple of years back with my dad. He was teaching me how to do this and I just kept it for my very first one. This one works real good. So just in case if I ever need a quick little trap, I have that in there and it just fit down inside of there with this hand line. So I was thinking to myself, why not go and put it in there? Um, you know, if I get to a spot and I just feel like setting up a quick little trap, maybe try to catch me a squirrel or something. I can always do that. And then up top, in this top mesh bag, I was telling you that I have my climbing harness or I have a strap to make my climbing harness out of. And here it is. I go behind my back and grab the piece in between my legs and run my carabiner through it. We have a video on that. Well, also, I'll try to get that linked in the description. But that's a real good video. Go back and watch that one. And right here in this next pouch, knife sharpener. A really old one. I want a field sharp. Another thing that I need to upgrade to. Smaller whistle. <whistles> Pretty good. Uh, works all right. Just the New Testament Bible. You never know when you might see somebody on the uh, on the trail, and you know God just lays it on your heart to give them the word. I got a little Bible here that I, I can lead them to the Lord with, or if I just want to give somebody this uh, on the trail or something, I got this just to give it to them. Um, this is the King James version, the true version of the Bible. Um, the most truest translation definitely go with the King James Version uh, there's just a couple of food line plastic bags here uh, countless number of things you can use this for of course obviously storage collect water in these uh, just real good idea to have these with you alright guys so now we're going back to the main pouch or the main section of this backpack it's got four buckles at each of the corners of the main 
pack or the main uh, pouch here. And this is the one that has the most stuff in it, obviously. Um, this is a lot of stuff to go through. We'll start with the top and then we'll move on to the se section down here. This, uh, I haven't had it in here in quite a good little while. You probably haven't been seeing it in my river videos. I just decided to put it back in. A little while back, it started getting in the way a lot and I wasn't really using it for a whole lot. But this is a Grand Trunk stool. This is really neat. Weighs nothing. Only reason I took it out is because it was taking up space. But now that I cleared my, some space out, I got enough room to put that back in. This is a really cheap uh, hat. This has saved my neck from sunburn so many times. It's got this flap on the back here that goes over your neck. And uh, you can button up the sides. It's just a nice little hat to have just in here just in case if I do forget my main one. I would like to buy another Dorfman Pacific. I lost it a couple of years ago when I went to the beach. Swimming with it came right off my head. So that's a good little lesson. Don't swim with your favorite hat. Okay. Grand Trunk Skeeter Reader Pro, self-explanatory, you know we love this here at Robert's Bushcraft. Number one hammock. Snug pack, enhanced patrol poncho. We love this thing too. I'm gonna sit down again. Sorry for moving around so much guys, but this ground is really rough right here. All right, so this snug pack, enhanced patrol poncho. This is a really nice, cheap option. For a good pack poncho it works really well um, you can throw this over you and it'll go all over your backpack and everything and still have enough space for you to fit inside of there and this thing is awesome totally waterproof we did a video on this too this is the AquaQuest Defender tarp in woodland camo so yeah, this is my number one tarp. This is like if you rip the ECWT rain fly right off and throw it in this stuff stuff case here. I mean, this this is a tarp that can hold up against anything. This is one of the main items that I would, if I had to survive in the woods for a month or so, this would be the item I'd take with me. This thing is amazing. Most durable tarp out there in my opinion. This is a uh, poncho liner uh, This is my blanket for summer like I was talking about in the beginning I don't carry a sleeping bag out there camping in the summer it just gets way too hot a lot too much to deal with a Nice little blanket like this will serve you well So I'm gonna get this bottom section packed back up and then we'll move on to the top one thing that I forgot to mention while I was packing this up I do have a uh, poly pro in here <laughs> lost my words there for a couple of seconds poly pro uh, right here down at the bottom this thing is awesome you just throw this thing on right before you go to bed in any season if it's just a little bit cool outside and that thing will serve you well you get one of those and put it in your pack because that that's an awesome little piece of kit right here all right guys that's all i want to tell you i'm gonna get this packed up and we'll move on to it all right guys, so up top is my hygiene kit. I do need to put this in a plastic bag and I might run in and do that right after I do this video. Y'all know what this is? Good old nice roll of toilet paper. Just in case, you know, out there hiking the trail and you gotta go, you gotta go, right? So you need a good little roll of toilet paper in there. In this little kit, this is uh, my newest edition up here, or one of my newest editions. I keep on saying that, but uh, I didn't have a hygiene kit before, and now I got one. You know, uh, 
Well, I guess I'll go and take it all out. I found this little tiny bottle of Vaseline or petroleum jelly. Let's see, I'll get that to focus there. There we go. Oh. Just a little tiny thing of petroleum jelly. Just in case your lips start cracking or something. A little tiny thing of dental floss. You need to floss every night. Get all the gunk out your teeth. I have two small tubes of toothpaste. And it's just because we didn't have a whole tube handy at the time. So I just threw two of these small ones in there. Now for toothbrushes. I have a very small cut off toothbrush that I was using at first. And I didn't like that, but I'm still keeping that in there. I went to CVS and got this. This is an awesome little toothbrush. Little kit here. The toothbrush folds down inside of that that pops out scoots down and you got yourself a whole toothbrush and you can a little bit of, of a spot there where you can put your thumb and I haven't actually used this yet but that is nice having that to where it can all fit down inside of that and I'm still keeping this inside of here just in case if I need a replacement so here's some little tiny dental floss and these are nice a little bit of a switch up. Of course, this is redundancy because I have two things of dental floss. But some people do like to use these better. I like both ways. Sometimes have that one piece of meat stuck in your teeth that you need a little bit of extra leverage to get out. So that's kind of why I got those in there. And then a small little thing of deodorant. Of course, you can't be stinking out there on the trail, guys. Put some deodorant on. And up here, I have a little cleaning towel. If worse came to worse, you could use this as toilet paper, I guess. And you just have to wash them out. That'd be a little nasty though. Again, that would be for the long-term situation though. You'd want rags, but this is just a cleaning uh, rag slash towel. Just a little thing to clean out my kits with and just be able to wash out and throw back in here when I get to the house. All right guys, so this is my whole kit here. That's how it looks on me. Got my ranger beads here. I need to recalculate my pace. Haven't done that in a while. And also, my whistle popped off here, so I'll have to replace that. But other than that guys, I'm ready to hit the trail. How about you? <laughs> so this again is the Fox Tactical Jumbo backpack. One more view is back here. Again, I love my hip belts, my sternum straps. People that take them off obviously don't hike long distance or uh, any distance at all really. Because when you have a pack full of stuff and you need to go a little ways, uh, uh, hip belt and sternum strap really does help. Sternum strap, like I was talking about, hip belt. It has elastic bands so you can tuck those straps away and they're not all up in your way while you're going to the woods because that can get quite annoying having all that up in your way when you're walking uh, most of the time I would have my water bladder running down um, either my right or my left most of the time my left I like to be able to grab across my right and drink but there we go guys um, it's got a couple of different grab handles at both sides and the top uh, molly all over it my only complaint not enough molly on the sides as you can tell with my food kit 
I had to tie that on paracord. I'm not a big fan of doing that. I would much rather have a good molly system on the side there. So that's my only complaint with this bag, not enough molly. But other than that guys, this is my pack. This is my go bag. My this this could be my get home bag, definitely. Um, of course, I'm not old enough to drive yet. Um, I really don't have keys to keep up with. But what really consists of my EDC is just a good little folder. I would like a nice Leatherman uh, multi-tool and a pen. And of course my wallet, I don't have that on me right now because I'm just in my backyard. Um, but obviously you need a good little folder, a nice sharp folder, which this is razor sharp, and a nice little uh, pen. I'd like to upgrade to a nice little tactical pen uh, that has a glass breaker and uh, of course the pen itself. Surprisingly enough, they sell these at Dollar Tree and uh, they're called the R2 and pick you some up guys and when you start writing with these you'll really see why I like them so much and they're only a dollar and I cannot believe it and I know you're probably thinking what Dollar Tree pens but this is worth it. Pick you up one and try it. Um, as far as clothing goes, uh, def summertime, uh, it's definitely not Crocs out in the woods, but um, it would be hiking boots, my Columbia's, um, and a good pair of cargo shorts. I love cargo shorts and a t-shirt. Um, fall time, kind of the same thing, maybe pants and a long sleeve shirt, pending. And of course winter, all decked out with uh, Coats and <laughs> coats and pants, boots, good socks, whole nine yards, guys. Um, I like to thank you for commenting and subscribing and liking this video. And hope y'all all have a great day wherever y'all are. And God bless.